The BMW 6 Series Coupe in the E24 body is a wonderful example of how perceptions can change over time. When this model hit the market back in 1976, critics were quick to mock it, calling it an overly expensive, bloated toy with a claim of sportiness, where looks seem to overshadow substance. Even in the USA, where about a third of all 6 Series were sold, the model wasn't beloved even by the most dedicated fans of the Bavarian brand. Even David Evan Davis Jr., a pillar of American automotive journalism and publisher of Car and Driver, a big BMW enthusiast and promoter on American soil, didn't speak too highly of the 6 Series. But when the 13-year life cycle of the 6 Series finally came to an end, and the high-tech 8 Series E31 took its place, fans started mourning the loss of the 6 Series, fondly remembering it as a shining example of true BMW style. By the late 1960s BMW was standing firmly on its feet, although just a decade ago, the company was on the brink of bankruptcy. The total production volume in 1969 had grown to 148,000 cars, compared to only 75,000 cars back in 1966. Profits were stable, the reputation was improving, and a bright future was emerging on the horizon. However, the early 1970s brought about significant changes in the company's organizational structure. The new boss of BMW, aristocrat Eberhard von Kuenheim, forced the resignation of the head of sales, Paul Ganneman. In 1972, Bob Lutz, the former executive director of Opel, took over the position. During this time, the company's foreign sales policy underwent a serious overhaul. Previously, independent importers handled the promotion and sale of BMW products in foreign markets keeping a large share of the profits for themselves. But with the arrival of Kuenheim and Lutz, all export operations were centralized in the main office, and the practice of middlemen profiting at the company's expense was put to an end. Kuenheim fully understood that BMW's sales volume was still quite low. Instead of focusing on expanding production scale, he decided to increase profitability per unit. In the 1960s, BMW had already started competing with Mercedes, but Kuenheim was concerned that the Mercedes logo on the hood commanded more respect from buyers than the BMW emblem. He wanted to elevate the brand into a class of more prestigious vehicles and turn BMW into a direct competitor to Mercedes. However, he faced opposition from engineers and top management in the sales department who wanted to maintain the sporty image, as they believed it helped drive their sales. The peak of these debates came in 1974. The advocates for the sporty style emerged victorious, with input from Lutz in the USA, on whom they placed high hopes, a new advertising slogan for BMW was registered. The ultimate driving machine. Like most advertising slogans, it didn't carry any specific meaning, but the emphasis on drive was intended to set BMW apart from competitors who focused on luxury and features. Interestingly, at that time, sports cars were the weakest link for BMW, starting with the beautifully designed but commercially unsuccessful 507 Roadster, and extending to coupes like the Model 120 and E9, which were produced in the late 1960s. The last two models were quite beautiful and caught the attention of buyers, however, their sportiness, which mainly referred to their handling quality back then, wasn't significantly different from that of other sedan counterparts. At the time, there were coupes in the same price segment as the Jaguar E-Type and Porsche 911, but compared to those cars, BMW coupes, to put it mildly, didn't make a strong impression. Nonetheless, the company had chosen a direction for development, and to begin with, they decided to launch a racing program, hoping it would bring some dividends to the brand. The racing version of the BMW 3.0 CSL coupe performed excellently in the competitions of the 70s, which genuinely drew a lot of new attention to the E9 model and the BMW brand. The BMW racing program turned out to be so successful that, in the end, critics compared the successor, the E24, to the E9 and often concluded that the predecessor had more sportiness than the successor. Racing is one thing, but by the mid-70s, the E9 coupe had become quite outdated. Despite still looking acceptable for its time, its technical foundation was taken from older sedans of a new series dating back to the early 60s. Moreover, more importantly, the body architecture of the E9 no longer met the safety standards of the USA. It was time for a serious redesign of the two-door model. Based on cost-saving considerations, 
The new coupe known as E24 was originally planned to be built on the same platform as the next generation of large sedans, named the 5 Series with the codename E12. After some debates and discussions, it was decided that the new coupe would be positioned as a more sporty alternative to the two-door Mercedes R107 and Jaguar XJS. This sportiness was primarily expressed in its design, sleeker and less sedan-like, especially when compared to Mercedes. The mastermind behind this design was Paul Brack, a former specialist from Daimler-Benz who took over as the head of the design department at BMW, succeeding the legendary Wilhelm Hofmeister in the 70s. From a technical standpoint, the E24 was not vastly different from the E9. The large coupe utilized almost the same suspension, nearly identical braking system, and the same standard 4-speed Getrag gearbox as before. However, the optional 3-speed ZF automatic transmission was new, replacing the old Borg Warner unit. The base engine was a 3-liter, similar to what was under the hood of the E9 3.0 CS, but with a single 4-barrel carburetor instead of the previous two single-barrel ones. As a result, the power output reached 185 horsepower, 5 more than the 3.0 CS. Additionally, as an option for the coupe a 3.2-liter engine with electronic fuel injection, used in the flagship version of the 5 Series sedan, was offered, producing 200 horsepower. As for the E24 interior, it was a serious step into the future compared to the E9 interior. The dashboard literally surrounded the driver, aiming to evoke associations with an airplane cockpit. To support this image, they introduced the active check control display with a set of indicators. However, the more useful feature for the driver was the revamped air conditioning system, which got rid of all the problems associated with the E9's ventilation system. Despite the new exterior and interior styling, it was evident that the focus of the new car, named 6 Series, was on comfort and luxury, rather than its performance on the road. The first models, 630 CS and 633 CSI, were presented to the press in February 1976 at a special event in Spain, and then they made their debut at the Geneva Motor Show. Like their predecessors, both coupes were expensive, starting at 40,000 German marks for the 630 CS version. Due to the prevailing exchange rates at that time, prices on most export markets were even higher. In the UK, the 633 CSI cost £1,100 more than the Mercedes 450 SLC and £3,500 more than the Jaguar XJS, despite the fact that the 6 Series didn't offer not only a V12 but not even a V8 engine. The automotive critics generally had a positive response to the E24 design, although its large size and weight horrified some viewers. The recent OPEC oil embargo was still on people's minds, and some critics questioned why BMW didn't choose something more compact, affordable, and possibly resembling the 3 Series model for such a transformation. Nevertheless, European models were quite competitive. The 633 CSI with a manual gearbox could accelerate to 100 km slightly slower than 8 seconds, and its maximum speed of 210 km per hour was higher than that of the 450 SLC but slightly lower than the 12-cylinder XJS. The European version of the BMW E24 6 Series was 11 cm longer, 7.5 cm wider, and approximately 114 kg heavier than the retired 3.0 CS. With a total length of 475 cm, it was almost the same length as the Mercedes 450 SLC, although the BMW was still a bit shorter than the large Jaguar XJS by European standards. The handling of the 6 Series elicited mixed feelings among automotive critics. It was easy to control on the road, but maneuverability suffered due to the not so ideal weight distribution with a ratio of 57 to 43. As before, BMW's suspension struggled with handling irregularities and was particularly temperamental on slippery surfaces. Many journalists agreed that the E24's handling, especially in cornering ability, was on par with the Mercedes R107 but fell behind the Jaguar XJS. However, for most people, the main drawback of the 6 Series was its price. Complaints weren't so much about it being expensive. After all, Ferraris and Aston Martins cost much more, and buyers didn't particularly complain about that. The issue was that the 6 Series coupes were much more expensive than the 5 Series sedans. In 1977, the 528i sedan cost 27,000 marks, which was one and a half times cheaper than the 6 Series. 
It handled at least as well as the 6 series, and it was faster, all because it weighed 90 kilograms less than the coupe. The only thing the 6 series could offer in return for the 528 was exclusivity, for which you had to pay a higher price. As a result, sales of the 6 series started rather slowly, with fewer than 5,000 cars finding buyers within the first year. Nonetheless, exclusivity and the preceding restructuring of BMW's export deliveries helped the car become profitable. In the USA, the 6 Series BMW was introduced only in 1977, and Americans had to pay significantly more for noticeably reduced performance. The 630 CSI model was heavier than its European counterparts due to mandatory 5-mile bumpers, which added almost 12 centimeters to its overall length. Initially, the only engine available for the American market was a detuned version of the 3-liter engine, producing 176 horsepower. Despite this, the American 630 CSI cost almost 50% more than it did in Germany. The base 630 model in the USA was approximately 20% cheaper than the Mercedes 450 SLC, but both BMW and Mercedes were out of reach for the average person. In other words, American buyers were not satisfied with the coupe's price, and most preferred to choose the 5 Series sedan, which performed just as well but was more practical and much cheaper. BMW listened to its customers and in 1978 introduced the 633 CSI model, replacing the original engine with a 3.2-liter M30. The American 633 CSI had only slightly more power, 177 horsepower, but the increased mid-range torque made the updated car significantly more enjoyable to drive than the 1977 model. Nevertheless, many potential buyers came to the same conclusions as the critics, and the sales of the 6 Series in the USA were modest, to put it mildly. They only started to pick up in the early 80s. However, the luxurious coupes in the USA were not as popular as they were in the 70s, and only about 30% of their total number accounted for American sales during the E24's life cycle. Meanwhile, in Europe Mercedes began to feel a real threat from BMW, in 1978 they responded to BMW's challenge by releasing a limited series called the 450 SLC 5.0, later renamed the 500 SLC. This version was equipped with a new V8 engine producing 240 horsepower, and since the new coupe was lighter and more powerful, the 450 SLC 5.0 was significantly faster than the previous version and its BMW competitor. However, the folks at BMW didn't back down. In the same year, they introduced the 635 CSI, equipped with a new six-cylinder engine codenamed M90. Similar to the M88 engine developed for the BMW M1 supercar, the M90 had a 3.45-liter displacement but used a single camshaft. The engine developed impressive 218 horsepower, a substantial improvement over the 633 CSI. Paired with the new 5-speed Getrag gearbox, the M90 took the coupe's performance to a whole new level, reaching a top speed of 220 km per hour and accelerating from 0 to 100 km per hour in under 8 seconds. The following year, the European 635 CSI was fitted with the Bosch ABS system, again to keep up with Mercedes. However, American versions of the 6 Series didn't have ABS until 1985. The 635 CSI gained significant popularity, especially in Germany. In the first year, it accounted for nearly a quarter of the production, and in the second year, it went up to over 50%. Starting from mid-1979, a new base model, the 628 with fuel injection, replaced the carbureted version of the 630 CS. However, buyers who could afford the 6 Series didn't show much interest in the base version. BMW managed to sell only about 6,000 of these models between 1979 and 1987. The BMW racing team didn't rush to adopt the E24. The good old 3.0 CSL remained competitive in the European Touring Championship until 1979, while the 6 Series debuted in competitions only in 1980. The racing 6 Series never achieved the same success as the 3.0 CSL, but its results were still quite impressive. This further solidified the 6 Series as the flagship image of BMW's model lineup much more recognizable than the nominal flagship sedan, the 7 Series. In 
In 1982, BMW began redesigning the 6 Series. Visually, it underwent only minor changes, but the manufacturer claimed that numerous small improvements reduced its weight in the European version by nearly 100 kilograms. For the front suspension of the E24 model in 1982, BMW used components from the first generation of the 7 Series, while the rear suspension was borrowed from the updated 5 Series. They revised the geometry of the control arms, which noticeably improved its handling. Inside the car, a sophisticated and expensive onboard computer was introduced, along with a fuel economy sensor and an indicator for scheduled maintenance. The BMW 635 also received a new engine, slightly smaller in displacement by 20 cubic centimeters, but with the power remaining unchanged at 218 horsepower. The engine was now paired with a 4-speed ZF automatic transmission, enhancing the fuel efficiency compared to the previous 3-speed automatic used in the earlier model. In September 1983, BMW unveiled the M635 CSI model, equipped with a new 24-valve engine featuring dual overhead camshafts and a 3.45-liter displacement named M88-3. This engine was another derivative of the M88 engine found in the supercar M1. At that time, the M88-3 became the most powerful engine ever used in BMW civilian production cars, producing 286 horsepower at 6,500 revolutions per minute. The M635 CSI had a rigid sports suspension, wide Michelin tires, a 5-speed Getrag gearbox, and a limited slip differential. Official BMW statements claimed that the M635 could accelerate from 0 to 100 km per hour in 6.4 seconds, with a top speed exceeding 250 km per hour. Now the BMW M635 CSI became even faster than the Lotus Esprit Turbo and kept up with the more expensive Porsche 928 S2 in terms of performance. Some critics even called it the best BMW of its time. In 86, the BMW M635 made its way to the North American market and was sold as the M6. Due to some emission regulations, the M6 in the USA had a bit less power, 256 horsepower to be exact, which was 30 horsepower less than its European version, but it was still a seriously quick car, going from 0 to 60 in just 7 seconds. It handled like a dream with excellent braking and steering systems, the only downside was its fuel efficiency, as it guzzled about 17 liters of gas per 100 kilometers. That put it under a higher fuel tax, adding more than $2,000 to its already impressive price, nearly $56,000. Although the M6 was meant to boost the sporting image of the 6 Series, most buyers leaned towards the models with luxurious features and a more modest price tag, like the 635 CSI version, which formed the bulk of the 6 Series sales. About 60% of the cars sold came with automatic transmissions, and even more had air conditioners and leather interiors. Those options were in high demand. In 1987, BMW responded to the demand by releasing the 635 CSI Highline Edition, known as the L6 in the USA. This model packed almost all the available options from the 6 Series catalog and was only sold with an automatic transmission. Sales of the 6 Series grew throughout most of its life cycle. The total production volume increased from 4,933 units in 1976 to 9,626 units in 85, with a slight dip in 81. However, starting from 86, the 6 Series faced a decline. 1989 marked the final year for the E24 model, with only 1,000 units sold before production ceased. Overall, the total sales volume reached 86,216 units, the 6 Series outsold the Jaguar XJS, whose maximum annual production never exceeded 6,000 units. Nevertheless, it couldn't catch up to Mercedes-Benz, although it's worth noting that, in a way, this comparison is relative. In 1981, Mercedes abandoned the R107 coupe in favor of the W126 SEC line. Despite that, 
The R107 SL Roadster continued to sell until 1989. Anyway, only the SEC coupes sold better than BM's 6 series, but when adding the SL sales to the mix, Mercedes had almost a 3 to 1 lead. This is remarkable, considering that in the late 80s, Mercedes was significantly more expensive than BMW. In Germany, the BMW 635 cost around 80,000 marks, while the Mercedes 560 was sold for 140,000 marks. The sales figures clearly indicate that for luxury car buyers, neither speed nor racing success are of paramount importance, nor is the price. No matter how hard Eberhard von Kuenheim tried, Mercedes-Benz remained ahead. BMW management obviously came to the same conclusions, as back in the early 80s, the development of the successor to the E24 began. It was envisioned as a more sophisticated and expensive car, aimed at competing with the top models from Mercedes. Ultimately, BMW invested around 1 billion German marks in developing the new E31 coupe. In September 89, they unveiled it under the name 850i. The futuristic design of the model was captivating, and the V12 engine with 300 horsepower added a special touch. The price tag, by the way, was also mesmerizing 135,000 marks, which was more expensive than the last E24 models but still cheaper than the latest Mercedes 560 SEC. The public's reaction to the novelty was similar to what it was during the presentation of the E24. Journalists were impressed by the car's design and features, but they criticized its weight of 1900 kilograms and the high price. Despite serious economic problems during that period, the E31 sold quite well, however, many BMW enthusiasts already started missing the good old 6 series, just like in 1976 when fans mourned the departure of the E9 models. History repeated itself. By modern standards, the first generation of the 6 series has become hopelessly outdated, both technologically and stylistically. In its time, BMW 5 Series sedans were much more attractive to consumers, but the 6 Series in its E24 body will still be purchased and valued by collectors, even when all the E12 and E28 sedans have rusted away and disappeared. Time has preserved all the virtues of the 6 Series and erased its shortcomings from memory. Enduring the test of time is challenging for both people and machines, but surprisingly, the original 6 Series handled this challenge exceptionally well. As a postscriptum, in the last part of this episode,